You've got fond memories of playing your old retro PlayStation 1 on a CRT TV, but you just don't remember it looking quite like this. So yeah, I'm talking about all these little jaggies on here and all of these like that. I don't remember that looking that bad. Well, one of the problems that we have with modern monitors is that they just don't do quite so good with some of the old hardware. The old hardware actually leveraged the fact that CRT TVs were just not that clear. So these sharp edges you would see here right now and, and those and, and even some of this texturing on the, on the track would have actually blended in quite nicely to make a really sweet game. And you would have maybe even said, that game looks so real. And now you look at it and you're like, what? why did I think it looks so real? This looks really bad. Well, today we've got a product and we're gonna see if we can make our graphics look at least a little bit better. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we are gonna be looking at the M Classic. This is, it says better graphics, better pixels, better gameplay. This is a game console graphics processor. If we look at the back of this thing, it says, I'm gonna just read it to you so you guys know. PC gamers are able to upgrade their graphics card while console gamers have been limited by locked hardware. Not anymore. The M Classic is here to be the world's first add-on graphics processor for video game consoles. Yes, you read that right. The M Classic is like having a new graphics card without the hassle of modifying your game console. Now this says that it supports Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS4 Slim, PS4 Pro, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii U, PlayStation 2, Xbox One, Xbox One X, GameCube, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Sega Dreamcast, and then it has a little asterisk that says, and many more. Now this PlayStation One is the and many more. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. Now this promises to take your video signal from any HDMI device and make it better. That's what they say. That's what they say they're gonna do. So three modes of operation on this is processing off. So it just leaves it disconnected. It applies no visible changes to it. Process on, which is upscaled anti-aliasing and sharpness on, and retro mode, which is optimized for retro games. Now, for me, when I think of the PlayStation 1, I think of two games. I think of, well, actually I think of three. I think of Gran Turismo 2, always. I think of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, again, always, and I think of Cool Borders 3. Today, we're gonna use my personal PlayStation 1 console with Gran Turismo 2, and we're gonna do side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side comparisons of the three modes. So we're gonna have nothing at all. We're gonna have mode one, which is where it just turns up the sharpness, turns up all of the settings to make it look better, and we're gonna have the retro console mode, and we'll show it to you. So the first thing I need to do is a nice clean run of this track so that we can use the replay feature to get exact side-by-side -side comparisons of this game on that replay. So now you might be wondering, how am I getting an HDMI output from my PlayStation 1 in the first place? We are using this, which is a level hike HDMI adapter. This takes the RGB signal off the PlayStation 1, which is the best possible signal you can pull off a PlayStation 1, and it upscales it to 720p. This is one of the cheapest, best adapters that you can get for your retro console. It works on PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. It makes a very stable, reliable signal, and it's pretty cost effective. You can check out my other video where I talk about this device and compare it so you can actually see it in action, but that's how we're getting the HDMI signal for this video. And if you decide you want one of these, I'll put a link in the description where you can grab that. Now, I need to just get a good baseline of a, a track. So I'm gonna run through this game real quick. We'll use the replay feature to play it back in all three modes. I'm gonna be using my 
GTR uh, R32. It's been mildly tuned to have eh, about 800 horsepower. So hopefully it'll make it so that I can finish this track really easily. Now, I am not making any claims to how good my racing skills are or how good I am at, dri at driving a car in this game, especially when it's been a little while since I've played this and I just need some replay footage for you guys to see what, what it looks like. So there we go. Because we want to get a really good side-by-side. I'm so good at this game, I'm gonna like win. Look at this. Even though I totally wiped out, these guys got nothing, nothing on me. Now that I've got a good, super clean run finished off, we're gonna save the replay and we're gonna sync up the video so you can see side by side by side of all three modes on here so that you can decide for yourself if this graphic enhancer is really helping at all and if it's worth it. This is about $100, so it's not cheap. Is $100 worth it for this? It's hard to really tell, which is why I wanted to give you that side by side comparison. So while we're grabbing the replay footage to compare, it's time to pull out the M Classic and see what's in the box. So if I go like this, you guys can see right off the bat, oh, what do we got? I'm gonna pop this off. There we go. So we've got obviously the M Classic. Now this is a pretty interesting device. It has a HDMI input, so whatever what this would plug into. So it intercepts the signal to the monitor. So you unplug the monitor, plug it into here, and then this end would go into the monitor in its place. That inserts this in between the signal and it's what boosts that signal up. It also has a micro USB power adapter because this device does need to be powered up. And then we've got our little toggle switch on the side. So on the far left side is off. The middle mode would be on and the right mode will be retro mode on. So we're gonna compare all three of those settings for you guys today so that you can compare them in a very, very unbiased review. I will also say, and I should, normally I say this at the beginning of the video, I bought this with my money. I, I went and I paid for it. They did not send this to me. I'm going to be brutal. I paid 130 Canadian dollars for this thing. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna be seriously upset. Now it also comes with this, it's a red micro USB cord for powering it up and it comes with, okay, actually that's all right. So this is a US, USB, it's an HDMI dongle, which makes it uh, pretty easy to use without it being really rigid. So now that we're ready to, re to play the replay with the modifications on, we need to hook this thing up. So let me go like this. Get this guy out of the way. And it's very simple to hook up. All we got to do is unplug the HDMI signal from here. This guy plugs into it like that. So this is now the, the HDMI coming out of the PlayStation. And I plug that in and then I need to power this sucker up. And as soon as we power it up, the enhancements will be on. Before we go into the replay, let's actually just see if we notice anything on the spinning car. So right now this is enhancements turned off. So now let's turn the enhancements on and we just wanna see, does the car look any smoother or any cleaner? And so all I'm looking at is side of the car here is kinda, see how as it comes around, it's got angled textures to it, especially around the window and on the side of the car. It looks like it has less lines to me. Now let's check the retro mode. Okay, so this is supposed to be retro mode friendly, but let's watch the car spinning around in all three ways. Now that you've seen the spinning car, let's go to the actual race feedback and see what that looks like between the three modes.
Now you've seen the M Classic in action. We've done our comparison, our side by side by side. You've had a chance to see it fully set up and working on one of the retroest of the retro gaming consoles. You could try and put this on your Super Nintendo, but really part of the lure of the Super Nintendo is kind of the blocky graphics. So once you get into kind of the more realistic games that you started to see on the PS1 and into the PS2, that's where a product like this truly should shine but i have to say i'm kind of a little bit disappointed like i see what they're trying to do maybe i expected too much but when i compare them when i look at them i just don't see enough of a difference i'm not seeing it and maybe i just used the wrong game to try and demonstrate this product but what did you guys see put in the comments what did you see in the side by side how did you feel this was? Keep in mind, this is a $100 product. Like, is it is it really $100 worth? So I've been playing with it for a little bit, trying to, you know, see if I got used to it and then turn it down. Because I kind of experienced the same thing when I went from my PlayStation 4 to my PlayStation 5. I didn't really feel like there was that big of a difference in how it functioned, how it looked. But after playing the PlayStation 5 for a few months, and then going back to PlayStation 4, I could feel the difference at that point. I could feel the drop in the frame rates. I could see the visual quality was a little bit lower. So maybe this is one of those deals where you need to use it for a couple months and then not use it, and then you would see the difference. But when I compare it, I really just don't see the difference. So my personal recommendation is that it's probably not the product you're looking for. It's not like giving your, like what do they say? It's like giving a, your system a new graphics card. Not really, like not really. I have some ideas though, and this is where Gears and Tech predicts the future. Now, those of you who have seen this channel before, you've watched some of my other videos, and you're like, holy crap, Gears and Tech is a visionary. He definitely sees the future, and when he speaks about something that's upcoming, it's gonna happen. And I know I sound really inflated and when I try to leave the studio, my head's not gonna fit through the door because I've just puffed myself up. But there's some new technologies that have come out. DLSS, we're on I think 3.0 right now. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, NVIDIA's frame enhancing technology where they can take a low spec image signal and boost it up and make it look really, really good without a lot of extra processing power. But a little bit different than that is the AMD Fidelity FX. That's the visual enhancement system that's being employed on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X consoles, but it does it in a different way, and it does it in a way that you could actually create a device like this that is loaded with Fidelity FX, and it will 
actually take a signal like this and it will boost it up to be a 4K signal, fill in the blanks in a way that actually makes it cleaner and look better. I think these guys, they've been out for a few years now, the M Classic, a Marseille company. They've been out a few years. They've, they've had their chance, but mark my words, you will see either Fidelity FX enabled devices such as this that are man in the middle devices. It'll take an HD signal and turn it into a 4K or even an 8K HD signal that looks better than the original signal. And it'll do a really good job of it. Something else you're going to see, mark my words, you will see a monitor that has Fidelity FX built into it where you can turn on Fidelity FX, you can turn on performance, you can turn on graphics mode on the monitor and it will take a retro game such as Gran Turismo 2 and make it look awesome. How awesome? It's hard to say. When that comes out, I will try and get my hands on it and test it for you, but I promise that technology is coming. And because we're kind of a little late into the game with this guy, if you don't have one yet, just wait because those new ones are gonna be awesome. And if they're not making them, AMD, hopefully you're watching this, license that technology out to these M Classic guys so they can make the M Classic 2.0 featuring Fidelity FX because that will be awesome. I know it will. I know, I know, I know it will. For more future predictions, product testing such as this, or just coming out to hang out with us, we've got a lot more in store. Hope to see you again. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.